it's phenomenal. So you have less decarburization, you have less scaling and so on. You will get a fine grain, you will have the exact temperature that you're looking for throughout the entire night and that's pretty great. Great, great. My name is Tobias Hangler. I am an Austrian bladesmith and trained metallurgist. I am part of the development team of Apex Ultra. I've been bladesmithing for 14 years or longer and I've been doing this full time now for about two and a half, three years. So one added bonus that you can have with the fluidized sand bed is uh, you can use any gas you want pretty much. If you're just looking for a good heat on a low carbon knife and you have short holding times, compressed air will probably be just fine because you're just gonna be out for a very short time in comparison to an electric kiln. So you have less decarburization, you have less scaling and so on. But if you're heat treating stainless steels, for example, you might wanna use other process gases. So then that's where I typically shift to argon because it doesn't take too much gas to fluidize the whole sand bath. It's comparable to welding. So we're talking about three to five liters per minute. It's not tragic. So I will heat up the entire system using compressed air and before I put in the knife I'll switch to argon and then I only have maybe half an hour for the heat treating or 15 minutes depends on the steel and then I can put in my knives and have the protective argon. There's still gonna be a little bit of scaling because it's not perfect and I will put it in and I take it out but I'm safe in terms of decarburization. Other methods would be um, that you can apply anytime is using an anti-scale coating basically on the surface. Let's talk again about precision. Precision is pretty much, this is gonna be technically the best that you can get. Fluidized sand beds and also salt baths are very precise. You have conductive heat transfer, your whole system is heated up to the temperature that you want. And then you just put the knife in, which has very little mass compared. So it will be very precise. Homogeneity, the same thing. This is the most homogeneous heat that you will probably ever get. If, you're, if your kiln is relatively good, well built, this system is just gonna make the homogeneity a lot better because it's basically a cover and then you have the sand that moves inside. So everything is very, very homogeneous. If you pull out a knife, you cannot spot any differences visually. What about safety and emissions? This system is a lot safer than salt baths. It is, in my opinion, a very safe method to use. The only thing that you have is like sand coming out of the top a little bit, which is hot, which you have to be careful for. So I wear gloves around this machine and I always wear my goggles because I don't want to have like five grains of uh, 800 degree hot aluminum oxide in my eye. But other than that, it is very safe. You don't have any emissions like in gas form or so. You will have some sand that is piling up around your system. You can use a funnel on top. Uh, there's a specific reason why I don't use a funnel, but that's probably not applicable to your system. There you go! So you could use a funnel on top that will eliminate most of that. I need top surface even so I can use a manipulator mechanically, but if you do this by hand, funnel on top will be fine and you will eliminate most of these emissions of the sand. As this is not silica sand, you don't really need to be worried extensively about fine dust. As with anything, fine dust is not great, but aluminum oxide is on the better side. It's really very, very heavy and it doesn't tend to stay in the air for too long. Anytime you use a quenching oil, I would definitely recommend any time of uh, anything, any kind of uh, dust extraction anyways, because you'll have the oil fumes and so on. So having something close by or a window opened is always recommended. Now, how does this system perform in terms of efficiency? There's definitely a drawback. Now, we don't only heat, need to heat up an electric kiln around it, we also need to heat up a couple of kilos extra worth of steel and sand. So it does take more time to heat up, definitely. You will also have a semi-open top, so it will be less efficient than an electric kiln. It will definitely be less efficient than an uh, induction heater. That is the cost that it comes at. When you have single knives, this is really a system that would give me a little bit of stomach ache because you heat up two, three hours, the electric kiln, full power, and then you put in one knife and quench it. So that's not gonna be a good balance. If you do runs of five, 10, 20 knives, then it, 
again, it quickly becomes irrelevant. It's just something that you have to keep in mind. If you make single pieces, probably not the system for you. If you do batches of 10 or whatever, then the heat up time really doesn't matter, I think. These units are not exactly cheap. Um, also, there is no system that I know of that you can buy off the shelf and that will work. When I built my first one, I was looking around at old patterns and things that other people did and I got very useful tips from other knife makers and definitely wasn't the first one who built this. My contribution was basically only making a model that worked for me and picking out the right materials that would hold up to long use of these machines. So I basically constructed the inner parts, uh, did the material choosing and had them professionally welded. I also have a couple of these available if anybody's interested, but you will have to build your own furnace around it because I don't supply that or I have that. I'm not sure if there's anybody commercially selling entire sets. If there is, we'll definitely link it in the description. Last time I checked, there wasn't. So that, that's definitely a drawback uh, of this system. The time that it takes to heat up one of these units is higher. So for me, with six kilowatts, I have a similar interior with this and just a refractory outside with heating coils, electrically heated. It typically takes two hours approximately, probably a bit less, maybe one hour and a half, something like that. It will depend on the power that you put in, on the refractory, on the insulation and on the size of your fluidized sand bed. But it's definitely higher than the electric kiln equivalent. Okay, ready? Yep. Last but not least, what about the heating rate of the knife itself? With the system, we have precision, we have homogeneity, but what about the heating rate? I would say it's phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal because it's very fast and at the same time precise. Heating something up fast can also happen in a coal or a gas forge, but heating it up to specific temperature very quickly, that is a tricky task. And that's why I love these systems. Salt baths, again, would be very similar, would be just as good, basically, technically, but for me, the safety, the environmental impact of these very harmful salts speaks against salt bath and makes me <laughs> really recommend basically to anybody who's doing this seriously and having a consistent output to invest in a fluidized sand bed. It's phenomenal and you will get a fine grain. You will have the exact temperature that you're looking for throughout the entire knife and that's pretty great. So basically you just hang the knife in by you can just hang the knife in by any hook that you have. Just put it on the side. So this will also help a lot with warping and distortion because that knife is now hanging complete, completely free in your kiln. It doesn't warp or bend to any side. It's completely free suspended. So if anything, it gets straighter as it heats up. Yep, that was about it, I think. <laughs> That's all for us today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.